Hello everyone, I'm Sign One News anchor Gaytree Persaud. Here's a quick look at the top trending stories making headlines today. If you post an interesting comment during this update, we may add it at the bottom of the screen. Protests have sprung up all over the world in protest of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine's foreign minister condemns Russia's horrific rocket strikes on Kiev and says the last time that happened in the city was in 1941 when it was attacked by Nazi Germany. Many Ukrainian residents are seeking shelter and safety in the city, while others are fleeing the country altogether. The European Union announced more sanctions by targeting Russia's financial, energy, and transportation sectors and visa policy. And France's president is positioning himself as a mediator between the two countries and says he's ready to broker a ceasefire. Speaking of France, Sign One News international anchor Vanessa Paloma Bajarnik joins us now from France with more information from Europe. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Gaytree. Can you explain what's happening in Europe right now? Well, this morning, French President Emmanuel Macron called Putin asking him to stop the invasion and if he was willing to negotiate with Ukraine. Instead, Putin responded that Ukraine needs to stand down and not join NATO and Europe decided that Putin had broke the rules. France is considering calling troops into Romania. But right now everyone is taking a wait and see attitude. In the city of Kiev, Russian troops have taken over. They've gone inside buildings and taking documents and books and burned them in the city square. The people of Ukraine are just standing by, not sure what to do. All of this happening right near Parliament. Planes are flying overhead in Kiev and the people are just stuck. A lot of them are going underground to sleep to stay safe, staying vigilant all night long. That's so sad that that's happening right now. Europe is begging Russia to stand down, but Russia is determined to invade. Everyone's hoping that Putin is willing to negotiate, but right now, no one knows. I remember you were telling me a story about a friend of yours. Is he okay? This morning when I was asleep, I noticed that my friend had sent me a video. He sent me a, a vlog. He said he decided to get out of the city, to get out of Ukraine. And so I responded and I started to text him and I wanted to Facebook him as well because he sends a lot of videos on Facebook filming everything around town. And he said that when he decided to leave, he went to the ATM to get some money, but all of the ATMs were shut down and there was no money. 
So he video documented all of the closings of the ATMs while he was walking around town. He's not sure what to do without any money. All the while he's videotaping everything. And then all of a sudden the video stopped, the texting stopped. It's been about five hours now and I've heard nothing. The last I heard he was going toward the border of Moldavia and I thought that's where he was in Moldavia. But Russia, Russian troops are there. The Russian armies are in the north, in the south, in the east, and the west. And then I'm not really sure how my friend is going to be able to get to the border safely. I'm still texting him and calling him. It's possible that his battery has run down. I really have no idea. And I'm a little concerned. I really hope your friend is okay. And I really appreciate you keeping us updated on what's happening. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for sharing your time, even though we know it's late in France. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. The head of Russia's space agency says U.S. sanctions in response to Russia's attack on Ukraine could destroy cooperation on the International Space Station. There are currently four NASA astronauts orbiting on the ISS, two Russian cosmonauts, one U.S. astronaut, and one European astronaut. Russia's space chief indicated that placing sanctions on Russia's space program would block cooperation between the astronauts, resulting in the station going into an uncontrolled deorbit and crashing to Earth. Because the Russian side of the ISS controls the station propulsion, the U.S. side controls the electricity, and neither side can function without the other's cooperation. Also, President Biden announced that there would be sanctions on Russia's space station and industry. NASA says the agency is working very hard to keep the cooperation and everyone safe inside the International Space Station. Actor Sean Penn is already working on a documentary in Ukraine when Russia began its invasion. Ukraine's president said Penn came to Kiev to tell the world the truth about what's happening, and he has been attending press conferences since the invasion started. And back in November, Penn spent time in Ukraine meeting with troops just as the tension started to rise with Russia. A federal jury ruled three former Minneapolis police officers were guilty of violating George Floyd's civil rights when they failed to stop fellow officer Derek Chauvin from kneeling on Floyd's neck, which ultimately killed him. The maximum sentence for the crime is life in prison or the death penalty, but federal sentencing guidelines suggest the former officers receive a lesser sentence. 
In addition to the federal charges, the three officers are also facing a state trial later this year for aiding and abetting in Floyd's death. They have all pleaded not guilty. According to sources familiar with the negotiations, Major League Baseball has set a Monday deadline to reach a deal with the players' union. If they don't reach a deal, the regular season will be canceled. The reason for the deadline? League officials say players need at least four weeks of spring training to ensure their safety and health throughout the regular season. And with opening day scheduled for March 31st, they are running out of time. Scientists say they have evidence that people recall key moments in their lives while they are dying. And the discovery actually happened by accident. Doctors were monitoring the brain waves of an 87 year old with epilepsy when the person suddenly died of a heart attack while the brain data was still being recorded. For 30 seconds, both before and after the patient's heart stopped, brain waves typically associated with dreaming and memory recall were recorded. It's impossible to know exactly what was really happening when that patient died, but researchers believe it might show people experience vivid thoughts or what they call life recall during the dying process. Wow. That's amazing. Coors Light announced on social media that it is giving away free cans of its new Coors Almighty Light. The company claims the water in Coors Almighty is blessed by an ordained minister and it will, quote, ward off demons and keep your, safe, keep your soul safe. The new beer is part of the promotion of the new horror movie, Studio 666. And in honor of the movie, Coors is giving away 666 free 24-ounce cans, but the giveaway is only open in a few states. If you want more information, just head, just head to Coors' website. Sign One News will be broadcasting updates Monday through Friday. Then this Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, join us for a powerful live virtual show to wrap up Women's Empowerment Month. All of the stories and guests are women-themed, including an interview with actress Sandra Mae Frank, followed by an open, honest, and raw virtual production using experts excerpts from the world famous stage play the vagina monologues to commemorate v-day's 2022 theme rise for the bodies of all women girls and the earth it is going to be powerful we want to give a big thank you to our sign one news app supporters you help make this broadcast happen you can download the Sign One News app by heading to the App Store or Google Play Store on your smartphone. 
And you can also watch on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon. Have a great weekend.